Welcome to this Uz Jagger tutorial quick quiz about weapons or spas in Jagger. Ex audio. Recently, someone posted on Instagram that Germans would be quite serious with terminology and with their wording. And if someone would tell a German Jagger that he would use a weapon, a Waffe, in Jagger, then the holy music would stop, so be careful. And indeed, some time ago, I had a discussion with another German player about the terminology of weapon or Waffe. And he said, well, we could call them Waffe because we are using spars to hit people and aren't they copies uh, of weapons with a two-handed sword, for example, and so forth. And so I decided to write a little paper about it. Now at the beginning I would like to show you some uh, stuff, some items and let you decide whether they are weapons. Is this a weapon? Is this a weapon? Looks a bit more serious, does it? Well, compared to the small knife, is this big knife a weapon? Or would you say, is this foil designed for sports fencing a weapon? And finally, of course, is this a weapon or not? Remiso. In the science of history, in Germany, we do have Schutzwaffen and Trutzwaffen. And Schutzwaffen, for example, are shields. Trutzwaffen are attack weapons or offensive weapons, like swords, for example. And we can, I think, all agree that a spar, a pomfe in Jagger is no Schutzwaffe and no Trutzwaffe. We don't try to defend us from lethal force or from injury and we don't want to injure anyone and cause any harm. On the contrary. So, historically, scientifically, spars are not weapons. But the crucial question here is, are spars copies of weapons? You know, the live role players um, with their foam swords and they call their gear weapons. And they do this because it looks like more or less swords, fantasy weapons. Uh, or real weapons, whatever, but they are padded so that no one gets injured and so they call them weapons or waffen. And that seems to be completely legitimate, although you wouldn't hurt someone with it, normally at least. So let's have a deeper look into the de definition of what is a weapon. Argumentatio. What is a weapon? Now there are two types of weapons or even three types. And the first type is the most obvious one. That's the weapon that's made to be a weapon. This Viking sword, which is a very precise copy of a sword that we found in a Viking grave, an archaeological find, um, is designed as a weapon, although you might call it a copy, but the original was designed as a weapon to kill, to defend yourself and to kill other people or at least injure them. And of course, it has a certain meaning as a honorary object but mostly it's for killing and for fighting. So this is a genuine weapon. Compare it to this one, this here, that is an Aikido staff, and even this, although it's not sharp and it's blunt and all this, even this could legitimately be called a true weapon because it has been made to be a weapon, not a copy of a weapon, but it has even been used as weapons in former times and only as weapons there in these times, not as a walking stick. It would be quite uncomfortable to walk with this. So even this stuff, although it's not sharpened or anything and has no metal on it, is still a genuine weapon. We do have items that can become weapons. And a good example is this kitchen knife. This kitchen knife is not a weapon. It's a tool for the kitchen to cut onions or other stuff. As soon as you try to harm someone with it, to stick someone with it, to thrust it into someone, to injure or incapacitate someone, or even to threaten someone, it becomes a weapon. And quite an ugly and impressive one, maybe. But it is not a genuine weapon. It only becomes a weapon when used as such. And interestingly, as soon as you stop using it as a weapon, and when you stop threatening someone, okay, we're fine, oh, I'm continuing to cut my onions, um, then it starts to be a tool again and not a weapon. So this is sort of a temporary weapon, you could say. And anything could become a temporary weapon. For example, a chair could be a temporary weapon. Use it as a club and you have a weapon. Use it to sit on and you have a chair. Well, that's it. 
Other things are more clear, like this word or like this one here. This I uh, crafted for my readings from Indian books and for Indian games. And you see that this is um, quite very much a weapon. It's a weapon for hunting, not against people, but against animals. But it's also a weapon against people. So you could use it at both. But it's a genuine weapon by itself. And only if you use it uh, for shooting in sports, for example, for archery uh, sports, then it becomes sort of a tool in the sports, but it still would be called a weapon. My bow, my weapon, although I would never try to harm someone with it, uh, or not even shoot an animal with it, still I would call it a weapon, although I wouldn't use it as a weapon by itself. I just would use it for target training, for example, and for archery training. But even so, it still remains to be a weapon. Segmentum 3 is copies of weapons. There we have this one. This is a toy. If you show this to someone who's doing airsoft, then he might take it, maybe not exactly this toy here, this pistol toy, but another one, and he might say, okay, this is nice. I would just take it as a weapon for my airsoft games. And so he would call it a weapon, although you couldn't injure, or you could, but it's not designed to injure someone. It's designed to hit the people, but it's a copy of a real pistol, you could say. More or less accurate, still a copy of a weapon. So legitimate to call this a weapon? Maybe, maybe not. I think it is legitimate because, as I said, the only function of the original, of this copy, uh, is to hurt people, to incapacitate people, uh, to threaten people, and that's it. So still a weapon, although it's also a toy, and it's used even by Airsoft, for example, as toys in their games, although they probably wouldn't name it toys, because that would be a bit childish. Another very interesting thing is this foil. This foil from Sports Fencing is by itself a weapon, and it's called a weapon. And it's not really a true copy, it's not foam, but still it's a copy of original foils, maybe, but even foils in former times have been created for training purposes only. But still, it's a weapon, it's designed uh, as the original EPs, just lighter and stuff like that, especially for training, as said, to be swift and all that. It is flexible so that you don't hurt your opponent too much, that it doesn't become dangerous. Uh, it's blunted or even electrified in this case, um, to make it possible as sports gear, but even though this foil is exclusively used in sports and never uh, to threaten people or to injure people on purpose or even animals on purpose, even so this foil would always be called a fencer's weapon, a fencer's foil, of course, why not? Uh, it even has a special grip so that your hand can fit uh, very well uh, on the foil and that you can operate it with high, high precision. Um, so even this would be a weapon, although it is kind of a special sports copy of a weapon. How does this all apply now to spars, to Jagger Pomf? Now let's see. We have spars like this one, which is called a short sword. And we have this one even, which is called and does look like a two-handed sword. In German, we wouldn't so much uh, call it uh, a two-handed sword. In German, we, ca we call it zweihänder, so two-hander, or just zweihandpompe, so two-handed spar, sort of. Um, but even so, it reminds us of, uh, of swords and stuff, so you could say, well, this is a copy of a weapon, is it? I mean, it's two-handed and stuff. But if we go further, what about this? This is a lightweight stuff. I don't think that there is an original weapon designed as this stuff here and with the, these limitations here that we have here. So is it really a copy of a weapon? Not really. Um, that also applies to the Q-tip, for example, where you might say in Asian martial arts there are some two-sided uh, uh, spars, uh, two-sided lances or spears. Uh, but even so, um, well, is it or is it not? If we look at the original, Originally in the film that invented Jagger by the screenwriter. In the film, in the movie, people are using these fish hooks and these Q-tips and these chains to, to injure people, to stop people, to threaten them not, not to come forth so that your own team can score a point. So yes, those could be called weapons, could they? On the other hand, these spars that they use in the film, these fish hooks and chain and whatsoever, are never used throughout the whole film as weapons. When they encounter some uh, tax collectors, they kneel down, they don't fight, even though it's two tax collectors and a lot of jaggers, uh, which are quite sportive, as we know, and their gear looks quite impressive. 
but it's not used as a weapon. The guards are not using Jagger gear as weapons. It's only and exclusively used in the Jagger game to hinder your opponents to score points. In essence, the spar in the movie is made for hindering the opponents to score and not to injure them or even kill them. That's sort of a secondary effect to it. And one important point considering the copy is that all this gear is deliberately designed and only designed for the game, for Jagger, in the movie. It has no weapon original which they copy to copy the weapon. No, they just invented these gear, this gear to have proper yeah, sports gear to practice the sport. It's not a copy of an original weapon, even though some might look a bit like it. And you will see that two handers or short swords and shields are not part of the movie, for example. They were added in later, inspired by live role playing. So they are uh, they are rooted in weapons, yes, and copies of weapons, but they are not meant to be copies of weapons. They are meant to be Jagger spars and Jagger gear for play. How does this all apply for today's Jagger? Well, the Jagger spars are specifically designed to have a minimal risk of injury, a minimal risk of harm doing to other players. They are padded and stuff like that so that really nothing should happen. It is absolutely enough to touch a player just slightly touch him or her on the jersey, for example, so that the player must go down. The players don't play it out, sort of. They don't play injured. Oh, I'm hit on the arm and stuff like that. No, they just go on their knees, counting their stones, and then they get up again without any theatrical fluff, you could say. That's in certain Jagger styles, post-apocalyptic Jagger, yes, but we are speaking about sports Jagger here and about the uh, six uh, sparse combinations in sports Jagger. So no parallel there. Um, we have minimum. Uh, we have minimum impact there. We don't even try to to have HEMA moves in it. Only when it's uh, good for our gameplay that we're involving HEMA moves in training, so special fancy moves. But we don't do fancy moves for the moves or for the show or to show I'm a great swordsman. But I'm a good player. I want to hit you quickly and then I want to advance. I want to go forward. So no theatrical part there as well. Even if you would say, well, the film gear might be called weapons, uh, just keep in mind that the film is of very minimal relevance, if any relevance, to most today's players. Most today's players don't even know the film. And so the uh, original reference in the film of the sports gear is not really relevant to them. So we, in, with Jagger Gear, we ha would have the copy of, um, of weapons copied for Jagger if we assume that Jagger Gear is somehow the copy of weapons, which I said it isn't really. And with this, we come to, I think, the most significant part of all. And that is, language is power. How you name a thing interacts with how people perceive it. If you call your Jagger Spars Waffen, weapons, then people might even be tempted to hit harder because I'm wielding a sword, I'm hitting you hard with my weapon, yes! And that's not the intention of Jagger. The intention of Jagger is swiftness and not to injure, not to hurt any players. Aside from this, you might have quite a negative effect when speaking with the press, for example, about Jagger, because if they uh, hear that you're playing with weapons, then you immediately are in the live role-playing community or worse, in some kind of strange martial arts, sadistic, masochistic uh, something. So just be very careful how you speak with the press about it. They love to spring on dramatic effects. Yes, cool, some people are hitting them with weapons. Very nice, we want to be in the game and we make a big headline about hitting each other with weapons, great. So try to get the press away from this term weapon. As I said, w w uh, words are power and we in Jagger need good words to, yes, to tell people that we are actually doing a fantastic sport and then we are not just crazy people running around, okay, we are crazy, but not running around with weapons trying to uh, harm each other or that we enjoy pain or something like that. So keep this in mind, I think that's the most significant thing. If you speak with the press in Germany, never say that you are using Waffen. Never ever say Waffen to German press. They will jump to it and you will get really interesting headlines. Conclusion. It's debatable whether a spar can be called a weapon or not. Regarding the different aspects that speak against using the term Waffe or weapon and weighting them against the points that speak for using the term Waffe or weapon, 
I would strongly tend to not calling it buffer at all. As I said, with weapons you have to decide for yourself in the English-speaking community. But uh, for German it's that. For English I think spar, if we derive it from sparring, so from light boxing training for example, or world sparring, that's a beautiful term that fits very well to jugger, I think. So um, I'm not a native, so I can't really judge it, but it sounds quite nice. So I love the term spar for jugger gear or for jugger, well, what you might call weapons. In German, no, I am absolutely convinced that we are not playing with Waffen, we are playing with Pompfen or with Spielgeräte or whatever you want to call them, but not something that you want to injure other people with. I hope I gave you some food for thought um, and you might disagree, of course, you might have another opinion. Well, that's just democracy and that's life. That's nice um, when people have different opinions, but important is always to argue uh, on the spot, on the fact, with facts and not with emotions. Thank you very much for listening. See you around and welcome to check out my other Uwe's Jagger tutorials on team training, spars making, experiments with different kinds of spars.